Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. It's your boy, Sean Q, my partner, like always. Jay Roman. Together we are OSP and we are coming to you in a somewhat of a somber mood right now because we just lost another one of our stars. So far, 2020 is looking to be a year of shit. We just lost the great Mr. Chadwick Boseman and I call him great for multiple reasons. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, he just recently passed away from colon cancer which apparently he has been diagnosed with and fighting for the last four years of his life. Now, a lot of you, like myself, didn't really know who Chadwick Boseman was until four years ago, until we see him in, in, in 42 and, and get on up. When we see him portraying some of our, our greatest characters and, our, and greatest uh, members of our, our culture are being portrayed by this one actor and he's doing a hell of a job doing so, and he hit this rush where he was just playing these great characters, Thurgood Marshall, uh, Black Panther, the, the biggest, highest selling at that time, the highest selling superhero movie of all time. And this guy is killing it, killing the game. And he just bum rushed the industry. And all the while, none of us knowing that he was battling with colon cancer. And it's, it's, it's somber for a, a reason. It's because he was a good dude. Uh, I've yet to hear any bad stories about him. I never heard any bad stories about him. He was never disrespectful. He wasn't caught up in the Hollywood, I guess you could say bullshit. Is that it, for lack of a better word, Jay Roman? Yeah, um, yeah. It's just it's just a good guy who who took his his time that he had left and fully utilized it. Took full advantage of it. Whenever you hear somebody use the phrase "use uh, live life to the fullest," I'm now gonna think Chadwick Boseman. The guy loved acting. He wanted to act. And every chance he got to do a great job of it, he took advantage because he kind of felt like he didn't have much time left and he was living life to the fullest. And to say that he will be missed is an understatement. What do you what do you what do you think on it, Mr. Roman? Man, I, I still <clears throat> I still get choked up thinking about it. When it hit, I sent you that post or that that uh, article right away. Devastated, man. I, I was in tears. I had to be in private. Now, there's a bunch of people in the house, a bunch of people, but, you know, people in the house had to be in private. Um, even right now, I'm still kind of feeling just not great about it. So my thing is, you know, he played not only fictitious heroes, because so many people know him from Black Panther. Yes, the Marvel world knows him from Black Panther. <clears throat> you brought up the movies he's been doing. James Brown, or I mean, I should say Get On Up, that's from actually, I think, I want to say seven years ago. Okay. It's crazy to think it's been that long, because I saw the premiere of that in New York. We had tickets, and I, I don't know if I said this on the podcast, but when we went, people were decked out like it was Sunday church. It was crazy for just a premiere of a movie. And we got up and we clapped, we cheered it on, the whole thing, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. So there's that, there's Jackie, there's Marshall, like you said. And, of course, Black Panther. You know, I got, I got my shirt on right now. I've been reading Black Panther since, I think I've said it before, I didn't get into comics till like, mid-2000s, so, like, 07. But I picked up my first uh, Black Panther book, and it was by Reginald Hudlin, the guy who did um, a lot of other great stuff. And I learned. I learned who Black Panther was. One thing about it, when it comes to that character, for one, he was a black superhero, yes, but also Wakanda had never been conquered. It, up until, you know, just a few years ago, Wakanda had never been conquered in the comics. He, it was a kingdom never lost or never, you know, gave itself up, something like that. So it, it's, it's crazy. He did a lot of great stuff that we don't even know until, of course, after he dies and people was posting their graduation videos of his inspirational speeches, just his regular conversations. Great pictures. He's very photogenic, too. You know, good-looking guy doing his thing, can play so many different roles. When I saw him play James Brown, I think I saw him on Jackie, as Jackie before that, of course. But uh, we had seen James Brown twice, and I think I mentioned this, how I don't know who else could have done that role, but he played it so well. His moves were perfect. His leg work, everything perfect. You know what I mean? And, and then just the way he just delivered the whole look. I loved it. I loved it. You know what I mean? And so – there's just that, that, you know, he, he ingrained himself in me over the last few years. You know, and the crazy thing is, diagnosed four years ago, he was already at stage three, which means I don't know how fast it progressed. Obviously, we know it went from three to four in four years, and, and unfortunately, he, he passed away for it. But that means he had one and two probably five, six, seven years ago. So that means pretty much his whole time I've watched him act, he's been with cancer. Yo, if that's not, if that's not tough, is that toughness, if that's not, if that's not, you know, just like, the will to keep going, you know what I mean? And he delivered every time, superhero or, or, you know, real life hero. He delivered every time. So one thing about that is, you know, it kind of hit a little close because he was only 43. He, 
get diagnosed at 39. I just hit 40. Maybe it's time to go check. They tell you now 45 to 50 is when you get your first check. But he got his first check before that, and it came out. So it's like, has me thinking like that. So, you know, there's that connection. <clears throat> Damn, I got horse all of a sudden. So last thing I seen him in, and I'm not sure if it's the very last thing he's done. But I don't know if you saw The Five Buds yet on Netflix. I haven't. Uh, the Vietnam flick Spike Lee. It's pretty classic Spike Lee. Very heavy. <laughs> very heavy. Daryl Lindo's Lindo's character is crazy. <laughs> just put it that way. But what he said in that movie, and just this one line, one little statement, is like perfect for what we got going on now. And again, it's Spike Lee, so it's heavy like this in the first place. I'm going to read it to you right now. He's talking about being a Vietnam vet and how they need to get theirs, right, and support their people and, and produce for their, and do things for their people. It's a very specific thing I'm not going to give away in case you see it. You'll see why he's saying it. But he says, every time I walk out my front door, I see cops patrolling my neighborhood like it's some police state. I can feel just how much I ain't worth. So it's just like that role, Black Panther role, Marshall, other stuff. You know, he did that Brooklyn, that Brooklyn thing the, um, last week. You know, he said in the one speech I heard him say, when he started doing things that were the opposite of what people were trying to tell him he should be doing and did what he felt in his heart, that's when things started really working out for him. And when he really took off and it really felt like he was, you know, he was becoming whole. Like he was pursuing his art. And like that was a, a huge statement as he said at the graduation. And it's such a good point to make that we get told all over the place what to do with ourselves. But you know what? He played roles that broke barriers in every way possible. You know what I mean? Granted, could there have been other actors that played Jackie and all that? Yeah, there could have been. As good? We don't know. Right. But, but he killed it. And he showed us the way not only on film, but in his own life. You know what I mean? And then the fact, again, he did it with so much pain, surgeries and all that. I'm happy he didn't tell us. Because then every time I watch him, I'm like, damn, is this going to be the last one? But now every time I watch him, I'm like, damn, that's the man right there. You know what I mean? Because he just did his thing and he never complained, never sought, never sought sympathy. And not that he didn't have help. His family and friends knew. Wow, what a circle that they kept it a secret. You know what I mean? So, you know, he, he did his thing and it, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, man. It's like, why, another one this year? We got Kobe six months ago. We got John Lewis. We got him. And we have so many others in between. It, it's insane. You know what I mean? Again, the COVID year, the 2020 year, like whatever it is, it's the hits just keep on coming. It's like, uh, uh, not that I can't take anymore. We're going to take what we take. I didn't know the man. But you feel like you do because you've seen him so many things. You feel like you know who he is as a, as a person. You know what I mean, and, and everyone kind of confirmed that. One thing with all this is I didn't know so many people out there knew of him and like his life, you know, and, and all these things. And it's amazing that so many people poured out. In fact, the number one tweet of all time now is his passing tweet from really? um, his, his um, the, the tweet announcing his passing officially is the number one tweet of all time now. So, which is kind of crazy to think that that's the number one tweet because it's a sucky tweet, but right, kind of right. amazing how huge that went that's huge news you know and it's devastating for for our kids and for us and stuff like that you know what i mean and yeah man and of course the direction of mcu is a little different now and we can get into that another time which i think we should right. um but uh yeah man it's a huge loss huge loss everyone in hollywood's over not not over this you know what the, I mean? uh, the thing that i pulled from this is and i've said this for years i always feel like you should treat everybody not just treat everybody the same, but just be kind to everybody, be nice to everybody, because you honestly have no idea what another person is going through. Yeah. You never know what that person is going through. This mm -hmm. guy had a video, I've seen videos of when he was, he was doing, um, um, he was helping advertise for Stand Up to Cancer. Okay. He's wearing a Stand Up to Cancer shirt. And he's saying, you know, you never know who could have cancer and just everybody, you know, we got to give money in. We got to get people to help. At no point in time did he say, I have it. Look at yeah. me. I need help. Help me for me. He never did that. Not one time did he ever say to the public, I am sick. I am in pain all the time, yeah. but I'm entertaining you. He never said that. Yeah. He did his part. He was like, we got to get some help and it's not about me. And we had no idea. You have no yeah. idea what the person next to you was going through or the person who cut you off on the freeway or the person who took the last whatever the fuck you wanted. Just be nice because you never know what somebody's going through. Yeah, ever. Very, very true. And it's just, it's just, it, it's frustrating in that 
I, I, there's so many people who will look back at 2020 like, man, I feel like 2020, 2020 kind of hated black people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, I mean, the reason I even brought up that quote is because he's seeing this going on in the world right now. We're going to get into this in this episode. He's seeing this going on in the world, and then he says it in the film. And again, Spike Lee, so you'd expect it. But it's, it's such a spot-on quote. And we lived this. We lived in hoods like this where you walk out and you just see cops patrolling everywhere. Okay. And I live in a neighborhood now where, like, I rarely see a cop. Very mm-hmm. rarely see a cop. Unless they're given a ticket, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a, it's, you know, it's such a thing. And, and he, he, I don't know, he just embodied what we all, you know, wanted to want to think of ourselves, you know, or strive to be or whatever, you know, granted I'm kind of, you know, we're around the same age. So I'm kind of already where I'm at. I'm just going to go for it and do something different, but it's just, I gotta say, it's, it's really giving perspective, man. I mean, he's, again, he's our age. He's our age. He's our age group. You put on a little application. What's your age? 39 to 44 types it. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's in that range. So it really, it really kind of hits, and he was so great. He, the fact that we as a people, we entrusted him to play some of our best characters and some of the great, greatest actors of our time, like Denzel Washington and, and, and so on and so forth, just almost anointing him, like, this dude is great. He's going to do big things. Trust me. Mm-hmm. I, like, I heard the story about how he went to Howard and, and Claire Huxley herself, Felicia Rashad, was his, his <laughs> instructor. And they, she wanted to get money for her students to go to this program. It was like $5,000 a student. So she called her friends and one of them was Denzel. And they said, when Mr. Bozeman met Denzel, he goes, hey, you help, you pay for me to get into this program. Denzel and his most Denzel ever goes, yeah, and don't you forget it. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't go earn it, motherfucker. You know, and, and, it and it's very true. It's like, you got to acknowledge these things, man, especially when, someone puts you on and Denzel helped him in whatever way. And he, and he passed that torch, you know what I mean? He yeah. passed on that inspiration. And I've seen some crazy inspiring, inspiring images. All the comic artists put up pictures of him and their character, Black Panther together and all that stuff. And there was one of the little kid that Veltria, I think just posted or resent me or something like that. And he put all his figures around Black Panther in the middle lying down. And I was like, that kid totally did the idea I had with all my pops. You know what I mean? But I have another one that no one's expecting. So I want to put that as a little tribute. You know, and uh, it's crazy. Like Jack Kirby and Stan Lee created Black Panther, and then Bozeman put Black Panther in our face. Like this is what this is supposed to be like in action, and it was amazing. You know what I mean? So I got in a conversation the other day, and I compared him and his career to that of Tupac, mm. in that the amount of work and the quality of the work he did in the small amount of time he had is equivalent. This dude had a small amount of time in the industry, but did stuff that will never be forgotten, that uh-huh, can uh-huh. never be undone, cemented his legacy in the small amount of time he had. Yeah. And, and same thing with Tupac. The amount, if you realize that Tupac, from movies to music, was only in the game for about seven years, you're like, really? <laughs> we are still yeah. talking about a dude only did this for seven years? Yeah. Wow. Mr. Bozeman, the same way. Everything yep. he's done it within this last seven years, that's when he came in, blew up, hit these characters that we'll never forget. They are now ingrained in our history. And yep. it's just insane. The guy's he's a legend in a short amount of time. And yep. that's 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 beautiful. I, I I love that. So we brought this up, not this, but we mentioned Spike Lee and, and the movie and what's happening because another another one of our own has just been just disrespected, shot in the streets for an an inconceivable reason and it's uh so i'm talking about jacob blake jacob blake everybody's seen the video they've seen the guy who and for the most part the clip we saw is a guy walking away from the police to go get into his car and that warranted him getting shot in the back seven times now the fact that videos like this still find a way to divide our country makes zero sense to me there should be no division about this there should be no question about this. Yeah. Even whoever's theory you take on why it's not okay for the police to shoot one person multiple times, they all work. Shoot him in the leg, use a taser, try to choke him, throw him on the ground, whatever the shit. There's no reason that two officers have to shoot a man in his back seven times. It's yep. insane. It's just, it's flat out disrespectful to humanity in general. And mm-hmm. any argument otherwise shows true hatred. Any mm-hmm. argument where I've seen, I'm looking or, at these people coming ignorance. across, huh? Or just straight ignorance. I mean, but that's at this point, I don't think it can be ignorance. If you see the same video we all saw, 
Mm-hmm. And the only thing that you can, and you are finding defenses for the yeah. people who did this, then uh-huh. you, are, you don't give a shit about human life. And you can't yeah. convince me otherwise. You can't. You can't, well, he was reaching for a gun seven times. You had to shoot him. Well, he said he, was, he had a knife in his hand seven times. You had to shoot yeah. him? Yeah. Well, they said the taser didn't work. So seven times you had in to his, shoot in, him? In his back. Let's, his I, back. I, 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 I know you said it, but I'm going to emphasize it even, again. In his back. Okay? Which means he's not facing you. Okay? Yet, I understand you don't know what he's reaching for in his car but he still turned away. Part of the point is as well, he's the one who called about, or no, somebody called about him trying to break up the incident that was going on. So why did you even question him? Now, granted, there's a lot more info out now. So apparently when someone called and they said the area, they said, okay, someone in the area has a warrant, this guy. So what happened is, according to the reports, they went there basically expecting this guy to be the problem when it was already said he was the one trying to help the problem. So they immediately just went to him as the aggressors. What do you expect the man to do in that instance? You know what I mean, your tasers didn't work. Then maybe you need to back up, go maybe back to your car, chill out, talk to him from a distance, do a better, me- yell at him with a megaphone, a mega horn, whatever the hell this thing was called. But follow him with his sons in the car, you shoot in the back. Reports have it. Four of the seven bullets hit him. All right. New reports have that only four hit him. There shouldn't have even been four. There should not have been seven. There shouldn't have been one or two. The man is probably paralyzed from the waist down. Possibly the rest of his, you know, he is paralyzed from the waist down right now. Possibly the rest of his life. I mean, in his back. That's cowardice, man. In any world you're in, shooting in the back is cowardice. And you're supposed to be a cop? Come on, man. I can say, and I will say this to any cop that, that for some reason watches us and listens to us and follows us, I know we have a couple, I will say this. Um, if at the end of the day, you were trying to justify why it was okay to treat this man this way, whether it's because you said he had warrants, whether mm-hmm. you said because he had a knife, whether you mm-hmm. said because he was going to reach for a gun, At the end of the day, if you get anything from Black Lives Matter, get this part. All we ask is that you treat us with the same restraint and responsibility you treat white people. Because Mm. I can almost guarantee you that if that is a white man, you are not shooting him in the back. Mm -hmm. And worst case scenario, he gets in the car and there's a fucking police chase. Yeah. We have a police chase down the street because this guy evaded police, got in his car, and now they're following him until his car stops, and they're going to let him out, get on the ground, they're going to arrest him. They're not shooting him in the back seven times. Yeah. That is what equality means. Treat us as fucking equals, just yeah. like you would treat somebody else. I just saw a video from our good friends at Woke Video on Instagram, and they posted this guy, this white guy, and his Beamer is belligerent drunk. He crashes into four parked cars, hits all four of them. He then gets out of the car. People get their videos out. He's stumbling around, obviously drunk. A cop shows up, starts to get a report written, asks the ladies at your car, all right, give this to your insurance. No one has detained the white drunk. No one. He then gets up and he walks the fuck away. This was all over the course of like 30 minutes. And everybody on the street, white, Latino, uh, there was an Asian lady there, all saying, officer, um, why are you just letting him go? And they're like, calm down, nobody worry about it. And this lady followed him. She goes, this is him crossing the street. He's just full on, ran into four cars, got out and fucking walked home. So they let him do what I said, the last one that got shot in the back, they should have let him do, take his keys, let him park right there in the, what is that, Wendy's parking lot? Right. Let him sleep. Say, you know what? We're going to come back in a few hours. Right. And then come talk to him. You decide to shoot that one in the back. Yeah, because yeah, he took your taser, you punk bitch. You know what I mean? He took your taser because he's going to hit you with that. Get out of here with that nonsense. And you let this guy just walk home? Yo, I can't articulate enough how I feel about this shit. You know what I mean? It's, it's you, know, you know, I've gotten to my point in my life where, 
I don't need to make political statements with what I wear. I have BLM on my hat. You know what? I'll go that far. I used to wear a shirt that said, danger, police in the area. You know what I mean? You used to have a caution sign. I used to rock it all the time, especially New York City. Mm. Especially New York City. I loved walking right by the cops with that shit. And I, I don't do that so much anymore. And I'm not sure it's because I feel like, ah, I don't really need to. I think, I, I think for a while I thought I didn't need to anymore. I think I might have to just come back out. Might just have to come back. Just political everything. Just so that you get to understand that I see you. I see you. I'm watching you. Like, you're not getting away with this. And you know what? I, I thought these people were on notice. But it's just showing, you know what? They're at the point now where it feels like, oh, I'm on camera anyway. I'm still going to do what I'm going to do, which is even worse. They should not be allowed to have these jobs, man. They should not. They should be evaluated. They should, like you said, you need a license to be a cop. You should be licensed to be a cop. You should get training. And every few years, you got to see if you're still worthy of being a cop. Review your records, review your statements, review your psych, get you in or out of there. If you're not worthy to be a cop, go, go do security or something like that. Go be something else. That's some bullshit, man. Like, it doesn't even make any sense mm -hmm. that this guy walked home. You know, I, and, go ahead. you know, it makes about as much sense as the next part of Kenosha we're going to talk about with Jacob Blake. Before we yeah. get there, I just want to address two things real quick that she said. One, oh, yeah, let me get back to my notes. I'm gonna say, I don't want to get there too early, but no, you good. I just want to address two things. One, please don't wear the caution "danger police in the area" shirt because <laughs> since we've already been proven that that we don't share the same rights as our white counterparts, you don't have yeah. the right to wear that shirt, which means you give them a reason to shoot you in the back. Please. Oh don't yeah, good point. Them. Good point. No, because then they'll see it as you're antagonizing them, and that's a reason to get shot. And oh, I am. Another, yeah, <laughs> so, and you'll but, another video. Yeah, yeah, um, that's true. That's true. Number two on that, I... Mm, I'm not... I, uh, I'm just... I can't express it. I can't express what's happening when I, when I look at this video and I see what the other side... And it sucks I even have to say the other side because I'm not, I'm not saying... I don't give a shit about Democrats and Republicans. I don't even, yeah. I'm not even saying all white people, all black people. I hear the argument where people are like, every Trump supporter is racist. I don't agree with that. I do agree with this, that there is an entirely different side of people who think it's one, not only okay, what happens to us getting mm -hmm. shot in the street, but they also find ways to justify it and sleep like babies at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, when I say the other side, that's what I'm talking about. The other side is the people who, when you put in this, this other side has a lot of power in media and in, 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 in places where you wouldn't believe it, but I'll go just basic. I'll go basic New York Post and how they portray us and how they justify what is obviously wrong. New York, New York, Post. New York Post? Yeah. Really? Okay. I'm a New little York surprised. Post. I haven't been there in a while, but I'm a little surprised. Okay. I'll show you one. We're about to get into a guy. We're going to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse and what he did in Kenosha, and what is the obvious difference between how they are seen and how we are seen. Mm -hmm. But I will show you this. New York Post posted a picture. It said, Suspect, suspected teen gunman Kyle Rittenhouse was spotted cleaning Kenosha graffiti before his shooting. Now, flash backwards, 2012. Trayvon Martin had traces of marijuana in his system at the time of his death, the autopsy reveals. One was doing such a good thing before he just had a bad moment. And the other, well, he had weed in his system, so obviously he was a bad kid, and that's why it's okay that he got fucking murdered. That is how they put it out there. That's how they portray yep. us. That's how they justify it so they can mm -hmm. fucking sleep at night. And small yep. things like that bother me a lot, just in the way they word things to make themselves feel comfortable. That's the other side. I'm not talking about just white people. I know tons of people who agree with this. Tons of people who are like, well, you know, I, my, my, my brother's a cop and he's a blue life, which is not a real fucking thing unless your brother's an avatar, by the way. My brother. Avatar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Are you an avatar? Are you fucking, does your brother pop a smirk? Because if not, that doesn't make fucking sense. <laughs> exactly. So Dr. Manhattan, your brother, go on. Fucking, he, 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 listen, the cops, you know how hard cops got it. You know, you want you go out there and you, you put your life on the line. I don't. I, ch I didn't choose to do that. But also didn't choose the responsibility that comes with it, which is not taking human lives and going to sleep like a baby at night. Period. So, um, yeah. big thing about that Blue Lives Matter bullshit, that's a choice. Uh-huh. I, uh, and I already knew this, but someone else actually uh, voiced it again. Being blue is a choice. You chose that profession. Just like public office of pol politicians, you chose to serve and protect the public. Black people 
people of any kind of color who are not white and don't have to walk around with fear every single day don't get to choose that. You know what I mean? And that's one thing people, I, I think a lot of these people aren't, aren't understanding. We walk around with fear. We don't walk around with confidence. We don't walk around with privilege. with privilege. We walk around with fear. If I walk by this area or there's a cop over here, what what am I risking? Mm. You know what I mean? Similar to, I think, how a lot of white people feel when they see black people walking down the street. They cross it because they have to think, what am I risking walking down the street here? You ain't risking shit. Just walk down the damn street unless you're in the wrong hood. You know what I mean? The wrong, wrong hood. And I just mean like gang ridden stuff like that. That's a different story. But it's like you ain't risking the damn thing. We are risking walking by you. We are risking walking by the cops because they will stop us for no damn reason. Just to say they got something on us. Just to incite some bullshit. Not all cops. Of course, not all cops. But a lot of them I've met want to ask me for my shit. And I'm like, you don't need my ID. And they say, well, I'm a cop. I can ask for your ID. Whatever you think you're going to say now, I might give it to you because I'm going to get your ass in court. And that's how that's going to work. But you can't be pulling that bullshit. And it's like, it's that same thing. We walk around with fear, man. I walk around with my black little girl. And I wonder, what are these assholes over here even thinking about this? Even thinking about her? And I get the little ones, oh, she's so cute, the snack. Because, yeah, she is cute and little. But you know what? They're going to fear her later. Okay? And she's going to fear them. Because that's the kind of tone that they've created. I'm trying to teach her. And, and Veltria is trying to teach her. She's got to be strong, bold, and confident. And not take no bullshit. All right, because we took a lot of bullshit. Mm. It's going to take a lot to encourage that in T-Center, but she has a strong foundation. She has you. She has the fam behind me. She has the East Coast fam. She has a strong foundation, much stronger than I think we had growing up. So I, 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 I thank you all for that. But the fact that she even has to live that way, even think like that, you know, or I think like that. She doesn't think like that yet. It, it's nonsense, man. They don't, they don't, that's what they don't get. We're living in fear. We're not living in, in, in privilege. We're not living in the ho fucking honky dory land. You know what I mean? It's, it's not... It's not cool to walk around and think one of these motherfuckers are going to get me. It ain't cool, man. It just really isn't. At the end of the day, I, don't, I, I wish I could replace the word equality with empathy. When people watch the movie A Time to Kill, which came mm. out a long time ago, it's almost 20 years ago, A Time to Kill came out. The speech that altered that entire course of the movie was down to basic, uh, a basic sentence. Take uh -huh. this scenario of what you have heard happened. And yep. now imagine this person looks like you. Uh -huh. Show some fucking empathy. Uh -huh. Just imagine it was you. That feeling you have when you drive through these hoods where you have that little bit of fear, you're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Imagine that hood had the ability to pull you over and ask you questions. Imagine uh -huh. if you had to stop in that hood. How would uh -huh. you act? There's a barricade now. You are in the wrong alley. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's dark out. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, unseemingly characters a lot of there's all oh, it's, it's 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 creepy over here it's kind of uh -huh. scary i'm a little frightened now imagine you have to stop and answer questions in your right mind in order for you to possibly go home because that's what the fuck we deal with no. all the time you can't you can't so, show that empathy and that's the problem one thing california has done recently is they put a law they put a bill on that said it's now against the law to call racially motivated called in you know Oh, this black person's trying to do whatever to me. This other person's trying. They caught you doing that? It's now, it's now, I think, a misdemeanor. All right. They're taking it very serious, which is a good little step. There's so right. many more steps we have to take. But that's at least something. And it's just like it, it's nuts, man. And um uh, what I can't even remember what I'm trying to say now about it because there's just there's so much to it. But when it comes to you know, Jacob Blake and the new protest of everything going on. I don't understand what people think is going to happen when you keep doing the same nonsense and we keep asking for equality, but yet you keep shooting the people. What do you think is going to happen? They're, they're condemning the protests, condemning the riots, condemning the looting and the burning. Granted, there's a lot of other things going on too, but you're not condemning what happened though, or are you? And we just don't know. You know, it's again, you bring up to kill, to kill a mockingbird. No, to kill a, um, a time to kill a time to kill. Um, you bring up, I think of that movie all the time. Just change the tone, change the person who you are. Why can't you do that? I really think it's a psychological block for a lot of people. They just, I understand they'll never get it. I would never get, I would never fully understand or feel what my wife has felt. I have in little bits here and there what you have felt. I have in little bits in certain ways. 
but not exactly to the extent, you know what I mean? Because I, I'm very light. We've talked about this. And so, you know, I can't go there. So I have to see it from your eyes and I have to understand, but I also understand my people have something similar. So I can so won't relate the other side. And I, you keep calling the other side. I'm going to use that too. You just, you just can't relate. You just can't. There's no relation to it, but please walk in our shoes, empathize. If you want to really learn, if you have, say, an L.A. friend that's from one of these areas, walk with them. You know, if, if you trust that they, you can walk with them in the hood, have them show you. I've been to Compton recently, man. It looks like shit. And I live in South Orange County. It's the most beautiful fucking place in the world right now. You know what I mean? We even have even schools opening up. It's a whole different world. And we're, it's nuts, man. And it's like you don't get it. You don't get it because you have everything you need because you have that opportunity. You know, and, and that's the crazy thing. Like, there's the lack of opportunity is, is a big part of it. They don't get that part, too. A thing that I've noticed, and it's, uh, it's not trying, I'm trying not to make this racial. I'm trying to make it as basic, humanized as, as, I'll put it this way. I had a conversation with a female. It was a white female. And I said, do you remember how outraged you were when the white man was telling you what you could and could not do with your body? Uh -huh. Having never given birth, given birth to a child, having no idea what labor feels like, having no idea, like I will never know what it's like to give birth. Exactly. To so I would never be able in a million years to be able to tell a woman what she can and can't do with her body. I can't empathize. Uh -huh. But I said to her, I was like, now imagine that uh -huh. for black people, you are trying to say it is okay for this to happen, don't tell me what to do with my body. Don't tell me, no, you, you don't get it. You just don't get it. You're a man, you don't get it. So then I'm saying this to you. You are not black, you are not a minority. You don't get it. You yeah. can't empathize, but try to remember that rage and that outrage you felt, that anger and that, that no, you will not tell me. And that's mm -hmm. why we are the way we are. That's why we are acting the way we are acting. That's why we feel the way we feel. Yeah. Because somebody's saying not, not that you're not allowed to do it, but we are allowed to kill you and shoot you and attack you and, and grab you and your kids. You talked about my, my niece, your beautiful daughter. Beautiful daughters are being face down on the ground in parking lots because the cops think it's oh fucking K to do that. Yeah. It's not okay to do that. Show some fucking empathy. That's all we're asking. I don't even want equality. I want empathy. Empathy. Show, act like if this was happening to you, you would give a fuck. How would you act? That, that's, that would bring some change because people can say, okay, I don't want anyone to feel like that. Because here's, here's what people are, are forgetting. And we've said it before, man, and I don't see why, why they don't seem to get it. Protesting, that's American. Being black in America, that's American. Being Puerto Rican, being white, we're all Americans. We're not anti-American because we're protesting. We're not anti-American because we feel like we want our equal rights. We're humans. We're humans living in a nation that is supposed to guarantee equal rights. Again, for all men, because that's still not technically in the, in the, uh, in the Constitution, mm -hmm. but still, equal rights for all of us. And why we're not getting it? Was it 60 years after the Civil Rights Movement started? 60 plus now at this point? You know, um, 100 and, what's it? War ended 63, 106 years after the Civil War ended, 200 years after this nation started, 405 something years after black people got here and enslaved. It's like, how long does it take? How long would it take for white people to, to not be enslaved anymore or to revolt and get their way That's if it America was reversed? Started. That's you know how America started. They didn't, want to, they didn't want to deal with the British. They're like, no, you're not going to tell us what to do with our lives. And they fought. Exactly. And they fought with them. So why can't they understand our fight? Yeah. When people say to me, this lady said to me the other day, she's like, well, I don't understand why people just aren't talking about what's happening with the sex trafficking. Listen, first of all, people are talking about it. Second yeah. of all, they are both bad. There is yeah. no, well, <laughs> sex trafficking should be talked about more than black life. No, neither one should be talked about more. They are both wrong. And until yeah. we all see that they are both wrong and treat them as equally wrong, there's not going to be a change. Exactly. It, it's not going to change until if there's not one is worse than the other. They're both fucking awful. Yeah. They're both terrible. Both involve the disrespect and, and nonchalant care for human life. They're yeah. both wrong. Should mm -hmm. be treated equally. Should, both mm -hmm. should be eradicated. We're just mm -hmm. fighting towards two different causes when they should both be dismissed. You said a minute ago, and I said it when we first started talking about this months ago, it, it's, not, it's not, I don't think it's going to change. 
the fact that we have access to better technology and somebody can whip their phone out and show it only brings us to the forefront and makes people more aware of it, people who didn't know it existed, but it's not going to yeah. change it. That yeah. these, these officers and these cops, these people in power aren't going to change the way they feel just because you're recording them at all. Uh -huh. they don't, it's not going to change their mentality. It's just now you get to see it more. It's, it's happened for years, and unfortunately, it will continue to happen for uh -huh. years. It's not going to change. Mr. Rittenhouse, this little piece of shit. Hmm. Kyle oh, yeah. Rittenhouse. Um, 17 years old. Let's, let's say this. 17 years old. He's a kid. He's a kid. He's a kid who decided to whip out his assault rifle during the protest and just repeatedly open fire. Let's also make this clear. He wasn't from there. He wasn't from that state. He was driven there by his mother. Ah. <laughs> uh... So this kid shoots people with his assault rifle. He then carries his assault rifle down the street. Police show up at the scene of the shooting. They get the, the call about gunfire. They obviously notice this kid walking down the street with a fucking assault rifle and right past each other, mm -hmm. directly past each other. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can, if I can uh, compare this for you, I will say it like this, and this is where I saw it. It was perfect. <clears throat> Tamir Rice was 12 years old, and he got killed for having a fake toy gun. Kyle Rittenhouse was 17. He killed two people. He walked by the police after killing two people, and he went home, and he went to sleep. Mm. There is no fucking equality. There is no fucking empathy. We are not the same, period. If there's no other proof than that, I don't care if you say different state, different time, different cops, different scenario, doesn't matter. Yeah. None of that matters. None of that matters. Because it it's also matter. not different. It's, it's also not, not different. So uh, uh, the piece of that is also people were yelling at the cops. He's shooting people. They said it. He's shooting people. And he even waved to the cops. The video shows him walking right by the cops, waving to them, saying something. And they just let him walk away. If you haven't seen this, everybody, it's all over, of course. I know some of us don't like to follow the news and, and, and really get into there. But sometimes you just got to see it, you know what I mean? And, and you can't miss it because you need to just really understand the differences. You really, really do because it is a huge disparity. It's, it's – I, I can't even – you said it. You said it enough. I can't even say any more about it because if that doesn't show it, kind of like the, the protesters protesting the damn closures – you know, no one said a thing. In fact, they just left and let them be. But yet the other, the black people protesting the killings. Oh, they're, they're, they're terrible, but they don't even have a gun. And you want to break that up. It, it's, it, you know, fight me on this. Convince me otherwise. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm going to sit there with a sign that, 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 like that one guy that keeps posting this stuff, you know, this and this and this, fight me on it, you know, or change my mind. You're not going to. Kyle Rittenhouse is, was obviously A piece of shit. Okay. I don't care if he's 17. I don't care if he's young and troubled. I don't care about none of that. Piece of shit, man. You shot people because you thought that they weren't equal to you for whatever reason. All right. You thought that the protest and the riot and this and that had to do with you, something against you, it had nothing to do with you. You even have to be there. All right. I hope you ride in jail the rest of your life. Hope you get death penalty. I hope it all, man. I, I'm, I'm fucking angry. This shit's ridiculous. I couldn't even sleep that night when I saw that shit. Unbelievable. It was like when I saw George Floyd. Same shit. When I saw all the other guys. The same shit. It's like, come on, man. You know what I mean? Kyle Rittenhouse needs to just go to jail. I don't, there's no excuses, man. No excuses. And you know what? All those cops that, that are in that video, they all need to get fired. Because you let this kid walk around the streets and shoot and kill people. Okay? 17 years old, you let him go home. And then you got him. Why? You should have you got him right then and there. The only thing I said that I said, you know what? At that time, if the cops didn't know yet that he shot people, somebody had to have said something through the mic. Hey, there's a man out here shooting people with an assault rifle. Okay, stop that one with an assault rifle that's walking towards you. Talk to that kid. See if that's him. Because you know what they would have done if it was a black person? Oh, there's a black person with an assault rifle. They would have stopped every black person with an assault rifle or not. That's just how that goes. That's always how that goes. So you, you let this kid do his thing. They all need to get fired. All those cops need to get fired because – there's no excuse, man. The only thing I even said was maybe, just maybe, had they not heard yet that there was somebody shooting people, 
maybe they thought, okay, he has an assault rifle. Maybe it's an open carry state, you know, like it was in what Michigan, in, in Minnesota or whatever, you know, maybe so, but that's some bullshit. You know what I mean? I even said that and like, wait, no, that doesn't, that doesn't even make any damn sense. Cause it doesn't matter if it was an opposite person. It was opposite. It was a black person. It was a Latino. You know what I mean? They'd be in arms. If there's shot his ass dead. If there are four squad cars and they're driving to the scene of a shooting and the first two cars pass by a guy with an assault rifle out, yeah. whether it's an open carry state or not. Yeah. The third car should be like, Hey, should I question this guy? Just cause. <laughs> Yeah. And even if the third car is like, we'll keep going. The fourth car should be like, hey, sir, pull up real quick. I just want to ask you a question. I'm, I'm sure you have a license. Can I see your license? Even if it's to slow him down, yeah. because somewhere in his vicinity, there was a fucking shooting. And yeah. usually when there's a shooting, you find the guy with the fucking assault rifle in his hand walking down the street. You put two and two together. You don't need a movie for that. You don't need Sherlock Holmes to figure out somebody got shot. This guy has a gun. Even if he didn't do it, let's just slow him down and ask him if he knows who did. Because mm -hmm. I guarantee you, if he was a minority, he would have been stopped, questioned, put on the ground, handcuffed. And they'd be like, oh, we caught him. We caught the guy. We just assumed it was him. Then why didn't you assume this white boy did it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you, exactly. see these, when you see these attacks, and that's what they are, they are fucking attacks mm -hmm. on our people by law enforcement. When you see them, and then later on they go, well, he had a, he had a, 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 a record. Oh, well, he had warrants. Oh, we had this. You didn't know that when mm -hmm. you attacked him. You assumed, mm -hmm. and you don't make the same assumption for white people, and that is fucked up. If you're gonna assume the worst, assume the worst of everybody. Yeah. Period. So you you ever seen um the hate you give? No, I couldn't. No. So, but you remember what Thug Life means, right? The the tap from Tupac. So the hate you give is kind of based off that, and and um the hate you give is tough. It's a hard movie to watch, man. And in this day and age, if I watch it right now, I'll be bawling because I was in tears when I watched it the first time. And now it's like, it's just in our face every day. There's a conversation in the first 10 minutes that I've had with my brother. The conversation happens in the first 10 minutes of the movie too. All right. It's about when you get stopped, what you do. We've talked about this before. And you, you have the thing, just get home. That's your thing. Just get home, get home safe. We'll, get we'll home. deal with whatever later, right? <clears throat> just get home. Um, so it's something similar. There's another part in it um that unfortunately just kind of does just goes the wrong way you know what i mean and and so i tell people all the time you got to watch that movie for the first 10 minutes especially especially my 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 friends who maybe are kind of like me either either they're they are black but they don't show black so you know they are what they are but they no one will ever know unless they say it I'm like you got to just watch this part because you know there's that but then there's also the main ca character common in the movie is a cop so she asks him, he gives a scenario. Well, this is why this happens this. You don't know this, you don't know that. And he breaks down a scenario of a man possibly have a gun, you know, and he breaks it down for a black man. And she asks him, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, it's a little bit different than the way this happens, but she asks him, w would you have done the same if he was white? And Common says no. And so she just like, she's like, wow, my uncle who's a cop is a piece of shit. Like she doesn't say that out loud like that, but you kind of see like, she got the idea like, oh, even he as a cop, as a black cop, thinks the same thing about his own people. You know what I mean? So it's about her finding her voice and stuff like that. Anyway, you gotta watch, people got to watch those scenes because it, it, it really like hits home for some. You know what I mean? And the, the talk in the beginning, it's that talk of like, what happens when you get stopped by cops? What are you supposed to do? You know, and I taught my brother that he was 16. This was probably 16 years ago. Me and Miguel talked to him. And, we, and I told him straight up, I'm like, look at me and Miguel. We're white. <laughs> yeah, we may be we may be Latino, but we're white. You're not. For those who don't know, my brother is very brown. He's Cuban Puerto Rican, and his dad is is black. He's black Cuban. So my brother is a black Puerto Rican, black Cuban. You know, you know him. He's darker than you, and all that. Not the, and you're not dark, but you know, what I mean, he's um, shades darker than you are, and and so it's a whole different story. Granted, he's a vagabond and and <laughs> so and Lee, a hippie and all that, boy, and a hippie I, and all that. <laughs> so different, but yeah, shout out to him. Yeah, <laughs> So, so there's that. It's a little different, but um, yeah, people really got to pay attention to this, man. It, it's they got to pay attention. They got to understand. And if you have people out there who you haven't talked to in a while, you got to maybe hit them up. You know, we've been hit up a couple times when all this goes down, and it's like, yeah, we're okay, we're okay, we're dealing. You know, the is on it, and it's like we, like I said, we couldn't sleep. You know, and the only thing I, get, I take solace with is, um, granted, I think we have a lot more here to do, but 
um, our sports players, our sports heroes are saying stuff about it. You know what I mean? And, so I'm going to take a break before we get to that because okay, uh, okay, we, that's we, a big, that's a big, su- that's yeah. a big subject. So I do want to touch up on that. And before we go into that, real quick, to 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 piggyback on what you said, I do want to say thank you to people like Eric Lucas and people who we know who reach out to us. Like, look, I can't empathize with what you're going through. I can't understand how you're feeling. I just know that what I'm seeing is wrong and I'm not okay with it and I wish I could do more. And so for those people, it's like what Vel said, see how you can help, call people out on their bullshit, don't let it happen around you, just just show empathy at the end of the day. And I appreciate people who do that. Um, We're gonna take a quick break, I'm gonna take a shot and then we'll come back, we'll be right back. (laughs) A small one. (laughs) Small one, I'm gonna get lit. And we are back. We are back faster than expected because it turns out I ain't got no liquor in the house. <laughs> I ain't taking a shot of shit. <laughs> Just look at this water. Uh, we are back <laughs> and um, we wanted to touch on something that's happening in sports right now. Now, when we say right now, keep in mind we're recording this today. It is September 2nd or 3rd. Today is mm-hmm. the 2nd. And um, we just witnessed a, a boycott, a short, a small boycott of the sports sports are weird right now there's no fans sports are being played during a time of COVID, and it's 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 very weird some people aren't really watching it which i've learned recently because they feel like when there's no fans why even watch it or if not all the players are there why even watch it i I just Uh realized that and they still we have some sports heroes like we've always had sports heroes but you were touching on we have some that are doing some important making important moves right now and saying important things and using their platform to say things that matter to them. Mm-hmm, I'll, mm-hmm. Let you, I'll let you start that off. I'm just going to start off uh, with the Bucks, really. That's, that's when I did the research and I, after I learned about it, because you told me, hey, check this out. And I was like, what? That's happening? And I looked up, I was like, whoa, huge thing. I mean, there was so much information I had to sift through it. Um, well, the Bucks and Giannis and all that, they decided to come out and read a statement and not play that game. I think it was game five last week, something like that. Well, and, um, and yeah, a playoff game. And people don't, I, I, you know, we know, but Giannis is Greek. Giannis is not from the U.S. But yet he still, like a lot of people around the world, are trying to fight for our um, rights of black people in this country too. Because he's here as well as a citizen. Whether you know what he is or not, people still look at him the same way. And he's in freaking what? Uh, Minnesota? Anyway? He's, been, he's uh, in uh, uh, Wisconsin and he's a Wisconsin. giant black man in Wisconsin. In the day. <laughs> exactly. He's so. a giant black man in Wisconsin. So, oh, yeah. So, so that started a domino effect. A lot of other teams sat out. And then a lot of the other players were upset, which I get because they voted to start the season again and to do the playoffs. But you know what? It did for us for 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 right now. It it did become bigger than what they needed, you know, from the NBA itself. They didn't need to play, and they all realized that. So CP3 and LeBron came out, huge, huge, huge um, vocalists to get, you know, racial equality spoken about publicly. The NBA right now. Let's make this very clear. The NBA right now is 74% black as of 2019. And when you think about who those stars are, they are mega stars, mega. It's not like, you know, oh, they're just nationwide and this and that. No, they're on par with some of the world's leading soccer players. We've talked about this, and soccer is still the number one sport, and the players of soccer are still the number one players worldwide. But LeBron's right there. He's right there, number three. Giannis, right there. Kawhi Leonard, right there. CP3, yeah, decline in his career, but he's still a top contender. These vocalists you know, have influence. They have power. You know what I mean? What helps as well is the NBA supports them because they realize our league is a black league. You know, other sports leagues, football, I think is 59%. Baseball is actually much lower than I, than I realized. It was baseball. Oh, yeah. Only like combo, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know, I, but you know what though? I, I don't think they, they identify the Latinos as black who actually are like Dominicans, stuff like that, Absolutely which is, not. They whatever. <laughs> so yeah. whatever they want to say, right. like, like Tatis Jr. I'm sorry, Tatis Jr. He's black. I mean, you're black if you don't know, but you know what I mean? But, Dude, but the fans out there. Like, these are, these are black. There's nobody walking around with baseball with a, a, a shade marker. Like, all right, this is <laughs> holding it up to people's faces. Exactly. Right. 
two percent, three percent, four. No, they're just guessing yeah. African American. So, with, with that, you know, I mean, when they speak out, people listen. When they speak out, they got influence. So they shut it down. LeBron shut it down. Kawhi shut it down. CP3, they shut it down. And what followed was baseball. What followed was NHL was a little late and they didn't do a whole lot. They have one face black player. We're not going to really get into that. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that one. But soccer? <laughs> soccer. Um, WNBA, of course. of course. I didn't see everything that they did, but, you know, another league that is they a did. lot they, of black they women. They stopped games as well. They took a knee and they stopped games as well. Um, and then baseball, what I appreciated was – was just that everyone said, you know what? This is sports is not important right now. Okay. Now I hear the comments, oh, they have so much money, whatever, they can afford to do that kind of thing. I get that. But you know what? These people, yeah, they can't afford it. They're risking their careers, they're risking their lives doing this. Yeah, they have a lot of money to do it, but they're putting their money where their mouth is. You know what I mean? And they are trying to get the people, the billionaire, billionaire owners to do something. As much money as you think LeBron makes, the owner of the Lakers team makes five times as much, six times, seven times as much money. So get them to join in. And that's the point. That's the point. You got to get the bigger entities. You know what I mean? These guys are the 1%. And here's the point people are making, are, are, aren't getting. Everyone always talks about how the rich don't do enough and whatever, they have so much money. These guys are the 1% trying to say something. I don't see Jeff Bezos doing shit about anything. The man is worth over $200 billion now, apparently. You know what I mean? His, his thing just went up. $200 billion. And there's people protesting because he's paying people $15 an hour. Now, there's nothing wrong with having money, making money. A big point of the NBA is LeBron James is paid as much as he is because he's the best at what he does in the world. So you got something to say. And he put, like I said, he puts money in his mouth this, and he – Really makes a point to hammer home Brianna Taylor, Jacob Blake, um, everybody he he you know Mike Brown, everyone from the you know everyone going on. So I can't even really I can't really express what I'm trying to express. I kind of lost the thought, but <laughs> you know, but you know what I mean. Like they're pushing, they're pushing, and they're they're trying to get people to really join in. And now they've actually forced the NBA. Actually, since we started writing notes on this. They've updated it. Um, now the Staples Center is going to be a voting center. You know what I mean? Different stadiums around the nation are going to be voting centers. Amazing. The Staples Center is empty. Make it a voting center so people can get there easily. They'll want to go there to vote. They'll want to be like, hey, I voted at the Staples Center. I want to go there to vote. You know what I mean? Because I want to go to the Staples Center. Granted, just because I want to get out the house too. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and, you know, the $300 million pledge that the owners have, have pledged and all that stuff, the, the players are saying it's not enough. All right? That's not enough yet. It's a start. I always say it's a start, right? You got to get a start somewhere, but it's still not enough. They have billions of billions, upon billions. So, you know, putting these things out there, making the films, making the videos, making the commercials, the books, the, the, the information they get to put out. The reason you want them to do it is because they have the influence. They have the power. They have millions upon millions of followers. LeBron puts something up, however many millions of people he has follow it. They see it. You know what I mean? The six points on the 10 points something. Imagine like Kylie Jenner put it out. She has like 1.2 billion followers, just some insane number. If she was to put BLM on her thing, 1.2 billion people would see it. You know what I mean? And again, don't know what she does with her life, but we know LeBron does. And I appreciate it. We want to see this thing. And it's so different because remember back in the day, we've talked about this before. Jordan never put himself out there like that. He never really did. And, and I, I, I get it. It wasn't his state of the time. It wasn't what he felt like doing. But now he is. Now he's coming into the picture. And it's really, really cool to see that. He, and also, for those who don't know, and I just learned it myself looking up the notes, I did not realize Jordan was the only black majority owner of a team. I did not know that. I did not know he was the majority. I thought he was still minority owner, but no, he's the majority. So, which means he, what he says goes. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> golf did a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> I, I real quick want to take a quick second, and I want to acknowledge uh, Chris Paul. Chris Paul, years from now, when they are talking about people like Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, uh -huh. Reem Abdul-Jabbar, they are going to mention Chris Paul. And Chris uh -huh. Paul is doing behind-the-scenes stuff that we don't really see. And I try to pay a lot of attention to it ever since I heard. And I talk about this all the time with Laker fans who get mad that Chris Paul didn't become a Laker. And ever since I heard the story and I put two and two together about what happened with the ESPN thing and how uh -huh. He told David Stern, don't put your finger in my face. Yeah. 
at that point, Derek Fisher was the president of the Players Union. Mm -hmm. Chris Paul is currently the president of the Players Union, selected mm -hmm. by his peers. Chris Paul is a natural leader. Every team that Chris Paul has been on, he has been the leader of that team. Not just vocally, but by the way he plays his game, the, by the way he presents himself. Chris Paul is a true leader. And when the Bucks were giving their, getting their statement together and putting their things together, they showed Chris Paul in the hallway talking to younger, former fucking good friend, not a team anymore, Russell Westbrook. Uh -huh. And Chris Paul basically is, in my opinion, the way I see this happening, and I feel like I'm going to be proven right years from now when they do an actual movie about this. These guys are all in the same bubble. They're in the True. same area. You and know, I, I forgot truly, to think about that. <laughs> I truly believe Chris Paul was the catalyst for them deciding not to play. Now, Milwaukee had to say something first because the most recent thing that happened happened in Wisconsin. It was like in their home. They had to say something, but they weren't there. They're all in Florida. They're in the bubble. So they didn't get to give this speech in front of their stadium in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. They had to do it in Florida. And in Florida, in this bubble, in these hotel rooms where these guys are all chilling, I truly feel like Chris Paul was the catalyst to say, we got to do something. Write something up. Talk to your people. I'll talk to my people. We got to do something, even if it's a game or something. He talks to LeBron. LeBron's like, absolutely, we have to do something. And uh -huh. then it trickles down that way. Uh -huh. I feel like we're going to find out years from now if CP3 is the one that did it because that's just who he is. If uh -huh. there's anything that I've seen from Chris Paul's character and how he talks, and he even he was emotional when they asked him about it, he, I feel like he was the catalyst. And because he's not as popular as LeBron, he'll never get the same amount of credit. But I salute Chris Paul. Cheers to you, sir. I'm pretty sure you had a lot to do with that, that boycott taking place, especially uh -huh. as the president of the Players Union. That means you had to say something. So shout out to Chris Paul. Um, baseball, yeah. Baseball, they also did a, a, a mini boycott. They had a – it was cool. The, uh, the Marlins and the Mets came out, had their 42 seconds of uh, silence. It was from Jackie Robinson Day. And they, they put a Black Lives Matter T-shirt on the mound. They decided not to play. The, uh, the dumbass GM for the Mets, <laughs> this idiot, is recorded – Saying, like, the commissioner doesn't want, why are we doing this shit? He's just one of those dudes who can't shut his mouth, who fully does not understand. He's talking shit. They want to stop the game. And uh, they'll, we'll come back out and play. Why is this guy even doing this? It's not even that big of a deal. Like, just, I mean, what? So, so a fucking guy died. What are they going to, what? The camera's still on? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. man, yeah. I, I told you when I told you, look him up, man. Total idiot. Like, mm -hmm. And the, the owner spoke out against him. I'm surprised he has a job. I don't think he will next year. <laughs> he won't next year. He's getting fired for real, for real. But baseball did something. Um, hockey, as of right now, hockey is only 5% black. There are only 5% black people in the entire sport of hockey. So the fact that hockey took a while doesn't surprise me. The fact that they finally said something, I actually like. Because the 5% of the black people were like, we got to say something for our league. Yeah. We yeah. can't be out here acting like this shit's not happening like mm -hmm. like. Like, things are just normal as usual. We are making money off Americans, and minority Americans are getting murdered in the streets. We are mm -hmm. obligated to say something. Yeah. To the mm -hmm. people who are in on social media, who are out in bars, who are at, at water coolers saying, well, they went on boycott. Why? Oh, they want to help so much. Why don't they turn their salary in and become a cop? See how fucking hard it is. Because that's not what they do. And you don't watch cops on TV. You watch them play basketball. You watch mm -hmm. them play football. You cheer for them. You spend money on their jerseys. Uh -huh. You want them to entertain you. Mm. So I'm in a spot where this guy goes, I don't understand why they're boycotting. Why can't they just shut up and play the damn game? Because why should they have to entertain you while innocent Americans are being murdered? Yeah. How about you ask yourself that instead of why aren't they dancing for me? How do you make these monkeys dance? We're paying them money. What else do they want? They want yeah. equality, idiot. They want uh -huh. empathy. Yeah. They want you to show that it doesn't – what's funny is these same people who are saying, well, I mean, they're, they're, they're famous. They're rich. They don't have to worry about it. Let one of them – let fucking – and I don't want to wish this on anybody, knock or whatever. Let a high-profile athlete who, who is darker than the average white person get killed by police. Then what is your response to that? That's why he didn't shut up and dribble. Uh -huh. That's why he didn't just go play baseball. That's why he didn't uh -huh. just entertain you because it could happen to him. It's the uh -huh. same fear. No matter yeah. how much money you have, it's the same fear that you will never, ever, ever understand. 
That's why they boycotted. Also, uh-huh. shut the fuck up. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, but I feel you. So, you know, you bring up Chris Paul, and people have to remember, Chris Paul, yeah, he's been that leader. But also remember, he went through this shit when he was with the Clippers. All right? They had to kick Donald Sterling out because he was caught on tape being a clear racist. Like, wait, this guy doesn't belong early. He doesn't belong to be an owner of a team that is, again, the team was probably itself 74 to 90% black at that point. If you, you know, count like, the freckles on Blake Griffin, yeah. It <laughs> so, you know, so Chris Ball has had to deal with this on multiple fronts. And I've said it before, they should have boycotted that game back then. You know what I mean? And so the fact that they got to do it now is even more important. It's one of those things like, oh, you were complaining about Kaepernick three years ago, but had you listened then, we wouldn't be going through this now. So let's make that shit clear. You know what I mean? And you hit it right on the head. They decided not to entertain you that day, and you took it personal. You took it as if, oh, I'm not going to play. I mean, they're not going to play. How dare they let me down? Oh, yeah? <laughs> Go yeah. fuck yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's how they feel, you fucking idiot. Also, <laughs> black players don't play NBA and, and MLB salaries. You don't exactly. pay them. They're not taking any of your fucking money. Shut up. Man, that shit was fun. It was fun to feel about. Um, speaking of, of, of rich and don't understand in a sport that is dominated by minorities, uh, Dana White had some, had some, had some, had some <laughs> how do you, you, <laughs> you mentioned Mr. Dana White and some yeah. comments he said at the, he, he spoke at the RNC for, 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 for just, just, just the ballsiest president that we've ever had. Just, just, <laughs> I love when you do that. It reminds me a little bit of this guy. It reminds me a little bit of the way Trevor Noah does. Every time he says his name, he says the J is something different. Donald J. Trump. Yeah, <laughs> Donald. Donald. Yeah, just the, just the. He's like Donald Donald juggling jugs Trump something like that. You know, I'm not as good as Trevor Noah on that delivery, but yeah, he's good yeah. on that. He, so Dana White. So Dana White said a lot. You know, he had his little speech on there. And here's here's what I want to hammer home about what he said. He said stuff about this president as if it couldn't have been someone else, as if this guy is the only one that's doing this kind of thing, mm. the only one that's worth speaking this about. I'm not sure what Dana White's relationship with any other president ever was, um, if he's ever had one. Um, Trump is – Trump is, people got to remember, Trump has been friends with other elites from different things for a long time, or friendly, I should say, you know, notably Jeffrey Epstein. So um, there's that too. Uh, so they may have had a relationship – you know, likely before he became president. And if not, who cares? I don't really care about that part. But I, I really admire and respect, or I did, Dana White. So he comes out in favor of Trump, which I'm, I think we already knew that. And I'm just going to give you one little quote, one little quote, because this is where it kind of really bugs me. You can say whatever you want to say about the guy. That this guy's the greatest thing you ever had. Whatever. Kiss my ass. But then he says this bullshit. Irrespective of gender, of your gender, race, religion, and sexual orientation. What unites us as a nation is freedom, equality, and opportunity. That is what it means to be an American. So you know by that statement who's not American then? Black people, because you're not equal. You don't have the opportunity. You're not treated as if you are owed freedom. So when you say this kind of bullshit, about a man who does not in any way, shape, or form exude those qualities or wants to or exudes the care to give those qualities to other Americans that don't look like him or aren't in an elite class of of money like him. Who the hell are you talking about? That is not our president. That is a completely different person. So it's almost like Dana White was looking at, say, Martin Luther King in the mirror when he said that. Because that's who the fuck he just described. He didn't describe Donald Trump. You look at everything this guy has done. He's taken away rights for, for, um, for anybody who's not considered straight. Okay? I'm not even going to go to the whole letters. Anyone who's not straight, their rights are being taken away. Anyone who's not white and rich, your rights are being taken away. Slowly but surely. All these little things that people say, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that. Yeah. Again, you're not watching his cronies. It's kind of like... Peter Parker and Spider-Verse. I'm going to say something that relates. Don't watch the mouth. Watch the hands. Okay? That's Trump for you right now. Don't watch his mouth because all it does is move, blah, 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 blah. 
watch his cronies because they're dismantling shit, okay? So when Dana White puts out a statement like that, it's like, you know what? You just lost all my respect. Everything you built over the last 20 years of me just like gobbling up UFC because I loved it and I've loved that you've been like that voice and you're that badass. Like, yeah, you know, I've seen him give it to, give it to fighters. You know, granted, he can't fight them, but I've seen him give it to him I mean, verbally. Like, you ain't worth it because you didn't try hard enough in this. Look at these guys. They're doing their thing and you slacked off and whatever. You know, I've seen him do that. And it's been amazing. Like, wow, I like that kind of boss style. You know, I, I'm always kind of like that. I hate the, oh, I need to ask please every fucking time. Screw that shit. Um, I've always liked that. But now you, just, now you just came out your ass, man. You just said something that does not describe the men you're talking about. It describes other men that are not. It describes John Lewis, who just passed away. You know what I mean? Like, that's who you just described. You didn't describe Trump. That's not what he's doing. And that's not what he's done. That's not what he's going to continue to do if he gets in office. You know what I mean? You are talking about a rich white man who was singing the praises of a rich white man. Very true. At the end of the day, that's what it is. You uh -huh. always break it down to really simple perspective, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's, it's a rich white man saying, well, look at this rich white guy. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Equality. <laughs> don't, don't come to my lodge. But equality. <laughs> um, I, we want to whip out a new segment real quick with it out. It's a segment, um, <laughs> and it's, it's based on basically this episode. Um, the segment is called, What Do You Do? Like what, what do you do? Here's how this works. And this is happening to me. I know it's happening to you. It's happening to a lot of us as we are, as we mentioned in a few episodes before, people are losing friends over this. People are losing acquaintances over what's happening in our country. What's the difference between civil rights and human rights and, yeah. and equality? The question is, when you're scrolling social media and you find that one of your friends, because MySpace made it official a long time ago. Oh, if I hit that button, that makes us friends. <laughs> yeah. One of your friends not only disagrees with the majority of your beliefs, but they mock them. What do you do? Like, if you, if you believe a certain thing a certain way, and you are, even if you're open to change, you're open to discussion, you're open to other people's opinions, what do you do personally if you see that one of your Friends, for those of us who are listening and not seeing me, I'm doing air quotes when I say friends, by the way. I hate air your, quotes, by the way. <laughs> one of your friends <laughs> is not only disagreeing with your beliefs, which is fine to disagree with, but they're mocking it. And they're, they're making jokes of them. They're making memes about them. They're making gifs about them. They're, 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 they're kind of spitting in the face of everything you believe in. What do you do? Now, are you the person who responds and says, hey, look, that's not cool. I feel this way, I get you feel that way, but you don't have to go this far. Are you the person who, who leaves that 73 page message in their DM to be like, look, I don't wanna put you on blast, but I'm gonna be your fucking friend, I'm gonna tell you on the side, you're being a piece of shit right now. Or do you just keep scrolling? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Do you feel like you're gonna pick and choose your battles? Oh, it's not worth it. I'm not even gonna, ah, oh, they believe what they want. What do you do? I'm very curious to know what people do. I want you guys to write us in on, on Instagram, Old School Perspective, on Facebook, Old School Perspective, on Twitter, we are OSP. We read all of that. I am very curious to know, in this scenario, what do you do? For the majority, what do you do, Jay Roman? Because you've already said you've had people who you considered friends, and it was mainly, you know, social media friends. And, mm -hmm. you know, the guy just could, it, completely different beliefs, which is fine, but the way they were going about it, and uh -huh. the, the way it was handled, you just couldn't be that friend, that guy's friend anymore. You unfriended him, which shows pretty much, I guess I answered my own question. That's what you do. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. So people don't know that sometime before there was an incident with him where he, he went too far with some stuff and I confronted him about it, you know, all through text. It's not like I see him, it's not like I see the guy, but as soon as I heard about it, I immediately text him like, yo man, that's not cool. All right. We hang together. Our kids have played together. You know what I got going on on my side. I know what you got. I don't even understand how you could even say that when your people are persecuted just as bad right now, especially, you know what I mean? He apologized like, yo man, I did not mean to offend you. I, I, I know we're both Brown and blah, blah, blah. And stuff like that. So I was like, okay. But then obviously he has his beliefs, whatever he believes about Trump and his, 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 the way he does things. And then again, part of the reason why I had to let it go is he openly mocked situations, you know? And it's like, Mm, that's a wrap. You know mm. what I mean? And at that point, I had already talked to him, so he already knew how I felt. 
I let him go. And then he hit me up. And I told him, and it's not about politics, man. It's about humanity. All right? This is not about politics. These are humanitarian issues. And that's what people are seemingly still not getting. Because your politician says what they say, and you think it's a political thing because of that. Let's not forget, Trump is not a politician. For one, he's just a piece of shit. But he's not a politician. He's a, he's a person with a lot of opinions on things he's and pushing opinion. agendas that other politicians are. Now they're taking away humanitarian rights, not political rights. This isn't the whether you're going to get a 5% tax or a 5% increase or decrease. decrease. That's politics. This is humanity, right? This is issues that affect equality, freedoms, democracy, the rights to vote, the right to live. We're addressing the right to live, the right to live without fear, without the pain and suffering of watching our people out there get shot. The sister of Jacob Blake, he's, she's like, I'm not even mad. I've cried so much. I'm done with that. I'm angry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And with that being angry, I'm going to close my part, you know, of this episode. And I'm going to put out there what Kimberly Jones said in a, I don't know if it was a video tweet. I'm not sure if she's famous, but she's famous now because of this. When she was asked, why the writing? Why burn anything down? To paraphrase, she said, we don't own any of this shit because you broke your promise to us. We don't own this. They're lucky black people are looking, just looking for equality and not revenge. And that's, right now I got chills thinking about that because that is so true. If, they were, if you guys were looking for revenge, it'd be a whole different story out there. All you're looking for is for equal rights. That's it. It seems like a simple concept. And in this country, it's supposed to be. It's not happening. We uh, Please hit us back. Let us know what you do in those scenarios, how you handle it, and, and what you've done before. Like what? Because I feel like there, we don't have at least one listener that's had this happen. You're scrolling something, even if you're like, I only go on Facebook once every three months, whatever. <clears throat> you've seen <laughs> what's happening. Yeah. How have you handled it? We really want to know. And we don't we don't cast judgment we are we are open to conversation the one thing that we can say we do we both do both jay and i and i know Val does it too is <clears throat> we open a dialogue with that person first if i consider this person to be a friend the first thing i do is open a dialogue hey real quick why do you why do you do you really feel like that or why why did you post that like so we're open to dialogue we're not trying to we're not going to be those people who there are people who exist who you can call them what you want internet trolls whatever the fuck you want to call them where there's so <laughs> purpose in life is to defend and 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 respond to what you said, having yeah. no fucking idea what they're talking about. If you yeah. go on Bleacher Report and watch all the things when they were like, the players decide to not play, the first comment, oh, why don't they just go take their money, go back to Africa? It's like, oh, well, this is what's <laughs> happening. And the WNBA decided they want to take a knee. Well, that's because they're all dudes and they have penises. Like, there are people that fucking exist like that. So, those people aside, those people don't fucking write us. But we just want to know. We're very curious to know how you handle this. And, and I'm just, I'm personally curious. And that's our yeah. segment. We are going to get up out of here. That was a very elegant, eloquent way to, to end. I agree with her statement. And I feel like it's only a matter of time before uh, the want for equality turns into the need for revenge. I, I feel like we're not too far away from that. You can only push somebody so far before they're like, you know what? Burn it to the ground. Fuck you it. said that. We've said that before, oh. like, how many slaps can you take? Let's hope we don't get to that point. Till next time, I am Sean Q. Be smart. Jay Roman, we out. Keep it all school. Get this goddamn light on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say peace that time, because right. we ain't fucking peaceful. Right? Peace, right? <laughs> we want peace. We want niggas in right. pieces. <laughs> <laughs>